Great to see you again on our virtual spaceship. With another six worlds and two realms to cover, our journey within the RuneScape universe isn't over yet. Welcome to the second part of episode three of the Tales of Gillinor. Infernus is the next world on our list to visit. This planet is the home of the various demonic races and is described as a world like Freniske. It has two other names, Pandemonium and the Infernal Dimensions, where the latter comes from the fact that it consists of multiple planes stacked on top of each other. Infernus is a planet made of jagged rocks and liquid fire, with its largest city being called Dis, which is currently ruled by a Sutheroth demon called Grigar. Infernus has had many shifts in power over its history. The first demonic race, called the Infernals, are the earliest known rulers, who ended up being overthrown by the second demonic race, the Chthonians. After Zamorak, the god of chaos, defeated Zaros towards the end of the Second Age, he helped the third demonic race, the Avernic, overthrow the Chthonians on Infernus. All known Chthonian demons on Infernus were either exiled or killed. The Chthonians originally came from another universe called Erebus, but they were exiled from here, and then they invaded the world of Infernus. Some notable Chthonians are Valinius, and here's a spoiler alert, he is revealed to be the leader of the Temple Knights during the quest as an Adra's quest, and another is Sinatianus, sorry if I butchered that name, from the quest Broken Home. Leaving the fiery world of Infernus, let's now visit the polar opposite a frozen planet called Leng. The frozen planet of Leng is the home of the Glacial race. Leng's location is also unknown in the universe, but the fact that the Elder God Wen had to create portals to allow Glacials through to Gillinor during the Glacial front of the Elder God Wars, this would imply that Leng isn't a planet close to Gillinor. It is a bleak planet filled with dark stone mountains. Leng previously housed a prosperous civilization until icy comets crashed onto the surface one day. These icy comets were the Glacials. After emerging, the Glacials proceeded to spread ice over the entire planet, which buried the cities and Leng's original inhabitants. They have been living on the planet ever since that event, which was eons ago, and little more is known about the prior civilization. Time to depart from Leng. We are now moving on to a world which can only be seen within Guthix's memory, Narragon. I know I said that Narragon can only be accessed through Guthix's memory, but some of you might be wondering why you can get there via a fairy ring. It is true that there is a fairy ring to Narragon, but I believe this to be a manifestation of what Guthix shows to the player during the World Wakes quest and not the actual planet itself. Narragon was the home of Guthix's species, the Naragi, before both it and they were destroyed as a result of the Narragon God Wars. Narragon's place in the universe is long forgotten and its location therefore is unknown. Those who were known to be responsible for the Narragon God Wars were Tusker and Skargoroth especially, along with many other gods including Saradomin. The capital city of Askroth was also destroyed along with other great cities. The Naragi were not fighters and so were unable to defend themselves from the ensuing battles. Towards the end of the Narragon God Wars, Skargoroth arrived to hunt Tusker. Skargoroth was responsible for killing Guthix's daughter, Agi, by unknowingly crushing the basement in which she was hiding in when he first landed on the planet. When Tusker and Skargoroth fought, Tusker impaled Skargoroth with one of her tusks, causing him to drop his elder artifact, called the Blade. Enraged by the death of his daughter and seeing a way to end the war, Guthix picked up the blade, blinded Tusker with it and plunged it into Skargoroth, killing him. This ultimately led to Guthix's ascension to godhood. He remained as the last surviving member of the Naragi species until his saddened death during The World Wakes. Time to leave the decimated world of Narragon and go to Terragard. Mm -hmm. 
Humans on Gillinor originated from a world called Terragard. Sarah Domin, Robert the Strong, and Oreb the Magister were, and are, notable natives of this planet. I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that its location in the universe is unknown, like many other planets. It is another cold, mountainous planet, similar to that of Leng, but has more fjords and ranges. Sarah Domin began his godly rule on Terragard and established a system of government in which he was the ruler. There are no runes within Terragard, and all arcane power comes from an interdimensional portal known as the Schism. This area is strictly controlled by the Magisters. Oreb is a disgraced Magister from the House of Charon who came to Gilinor looking for a way to restore his house to power on Terragard. Robert the Strong also came from Terragard as mentioned earlier and eventually became one of Gilinor's champions fighting valiantly against the Dragonkin during the Fourth Age. He had a panther companion called Odysseus who was sadly killed during Robert the Strong's battles. Time to say goodbye to Terragard and hello to Vampirium. Situated on one of the lower planes of the universe is the world called Vampirium. Consequently, this was the homeworld of the true vampires. Only four confirmed vampires actually migrated from Vampirium to Gillinor. Those being the four Draken siblings, who are called Luerniel, Draenor, Ranis, and Venuscula. The world of Vampirium has a blood red sky and contains many castles and fortresses. When Zaros visited Vampirium, he introduced the ideas of society and cultures, which caused a civil war to break out between the inhabitants. Just as a reminder, Zaros is the god of fate and control, and is a brother to Serin. Eventually, the war or the civil war ended and eight houses emerged from the fighting to try to unite the vampires. The player, along with some members of the Maya Key, have a brief visit to Vampirium during the Lord of Vampirium quest through a portal that Luernial Draken created. This quest, i.e. the Lord of Vampirium, is one of my favourites, even though many of the Maya Key members are killed. After the quest, the portal leading to Vampirium is lost and the player is unable to visit there again. The final world we are going to visit today, before we move on to a couple of realms, is Remmark. Guthix describes Remmark as a world of divine beauty and fabulous magic. It was the homeworld of the centaurs, ice sprites, stags and unicorns along with many more races. Interestingly, the landscape and inhabitants of Renmark would change as the seasons did, which caused some kind of amnesia, as the inhabitants had no memory of their lives before the seasons changed. One of the most notable characters from Renmark is Lumi, the Queen of Snow, who we have seen at many Christmas events on Glinor. The story of Remmark's destruction is a depressing tale. New to godhood was the young god Guthix when he came across Remmark. He noticed a giant parasite feeding on the planet's core. Determined to remove this parasite and do good for the planet, Guthix used the elder artifact, the blade, which he had used to kill Skargaroth, on this parasite, which accidentally shattered the planet of Remmark. Remmark's planet scattered into fragments, which were strewn all across the universe. Guthix did not know what became of the planet, but felt extremely guilty at the destruction he had caused, and this guilt can be seen in the Elder Sword Engram memory, which can be found in the Memorial to Guthix Distraction and Diversion. Sarah Domin actually located one of the fragments of Remmark called the Enchanted Valley, which we are looking at now. This fragment housed the unicorns and centaurs, which he then enlisted to his forces. The Enchanted Valley can be accessed via the Fairy Ring Transport System by using the code BKQ, Bravo Kilo Quebec. Not a lot can be seen at this location, but creatures such as the Rock Golem and River Troll can be found here as a reference to RuneScape's old random events. This brings us to the end of the worlds, and on screen you will see a list of the worlds we have talked about. I understand that not many accurate planet locations are known, but think of our real universe. As humans, 
We are only aware of a tiny fragment of the universe with the vast majority unexplored, so I think it is appropriate that we don't know exactly where each planet is stationed in the RuneScape universe. How could we? It is likely as vast as our own real world universe. Moving on to realms now. There are many realms out there in RuneScape's universe, but for the purposes of this video, which is to give you a taster, I want to introduce you only to two of them. And this begins with the Rune Span. The first realm or dimension we're going to look at is actually the Rune Span. Yes, this does mean that the Rune Span isn't actually on Gilinor itself. This is a realm where runes are much more potent and purer than they are on Gilinor. This is why the wizards at the Runecrafting Guild and in the Wizards Tower have created various portals to this realm at the top of the Wizards Tower in order to siphon from these extra potent runes. So the final realm we are going to analyse in this video is Scape Rune. Scape Rune is a realm which is parallel to Gilinor and is ruled by evil Bob the Cat. In this realm, cats keep humans as pets. Players may visit Evil Bob's Island via the Fairy Ring transport system by using code CIS, Charlie India Sierra. Previously, this realm was home to the Evil Bob random event where the player had to catch the correct fish, uncook it, as everything is parallel in this universe, and the fish are caught cooked, and then give it to Bob. After uncooking the fish, the players would be then set free by Evil Bob. Phew, we've covered a lot of ground in episode 3, haven't we? But I do hope that it helped you learn more about RuneScape's vast universe, the worlds and realms within. Episode 4 of the Tales of Gilinor will be taking a different turn from the usual. We will be discussing a specific part of RuneScape lore rather than giving a broad overview. Well, that's the plan anyway. Oh, but what's this I see coming up in the distance? Is that Evil Bob? What's he doing here? It looks like he's come to leave us a message. Damn, seems like you better subscribe. Cheers for watching guys, see you in the next video.